the next article we're going to talk about here is from Time Magazine. And this one is about the Koch brothers. And the title of this article is Coming Soon to a De Democratic Primary to a Democratic Primary Candidates Backed by Charles Koch. So as many of you know, the Koch brothers are um, well-known right-wing donors. These are people that have been, that are, fa you know, famous, popular among, you know, Republican candidates, the Republican Party. Um, they've given money to all different kinds of um, conservative organizations and stuff. And they obviously funded a lot of the stuff that was going on during the Tea Party when it came to, like, Americans for Prosperity and stuff like that. A lot of those, a lot of those organizations that loved, you know, that obviously loved the... Um, Love that tea, that whole Tea Party movement and getting more right wing right wing candidates into Congress and the Senate. So it apparently looks like they're going to dip their toe into the Democratic primary as well here. So let's check this out. It says the it says the political arm of Charles Koch's ambitious network is preparing to start playing in a in Democratic primaries for the Senate, House, and local roles, according to a memo being sent Friday. The decision is the result of a gradual shift away from aggressive and conservative politics inside the deep-pocketed donor network and one more toward comedy, committee, comedy, comedy, and compromise. Several major donors had bristled at the partisan image built around the Koch brother, around the Koch network, and have been lobbying leaders to get behind candidates that promote pro progress on issues like immigration reform, regardless of their uh, party. The groups will try to find candidates from either party that commit to pieces of the Koch agenda. The passage of the Koch-backed First Step Act, Stur First Step Act, a massive rewrite of the Criminal Justice Code, sparked many donors' imaginations on what other goals could be accomplished if they shed the partisanship and found allies from across the spectrum as they did on the crime bill. The Koch-backed vet uh, Concerned Veterans for America and their liberal vote vets have partnered to lobby for the revocation, revocation of the, author uh, of the author uh, authorization of military force passed, passed after the, uh, I'm sorry, after the, after the 7, September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks. Um, at, and the Koch-backed Lib Libre, L-I-B-R-E, initiative is working with the tech-powered FWD.us to change immigration laws. The news of primary plans was being shared with staff, activists, and donors by Emily Seidel, the CEO of Amer Americans for Prosperity and a senior advisor to its six sister organization, AFP Action. Quote, these recent experiences have shown when AFP unites with anyone to do right, regardless of political party, we can lead effective and diverse coalitions of people and groups to help achieve meaningful, meaningful policy, public policy victories, Seidel writes in a memo obtained by Time. The, the note also describes a series of four spin-off political action committees that will, direct, that will give directly to candidates who share the group's priorities on economic uh, opportunity, free speech, free trade, and immigration. immigration uh, I'm sorry, Americans for Prosperity and AFP Action do not disclose their donors to the public. Yeah, no wonder. Of course. Um, it says the spin-off political action committees, however, would have to name their funders and beneficiaries under current campaign finance laws. Koch-backed organizations had previously bought ads to thank Democrats who had shared goals such as when then-Senator Heidi Heitkamp backed a repeal of a portion of the Dodd-Frank bank regulation. But the shift into direct intervention, intervention in democratic politics is a new one. This won't be easy. We expect um, skepticism from those who say it can't be done, Seidel writes. Um, there is no set budget for this democratic play, but in the past, Koch initiatives push into the hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, it says there is no set budget for this democratic play, but in the past, uh, Koch initiatives push into the hundreds of millions of dollars. The network decided not to participate in the 2020 presidential race officially. The line uh, into the president, yeah, 2020 presidential race. Officially, the line is donors think they can have a greater impact at lower level races, but it's worth remembering just how uneasy is the relationship between Charles Koch and Donald Trump. That's, yeah, that's why they're trying to get into the Democratic Party. 
What remains to be seen is how Democrats may take the development. That the Quoke Network has been a boogeyman on the left and its backing in a primary may not be as helpful as Koch strategists hope. Still, as the broader network inches away from politics, it will be interesting to see how just how post-partisan the donors will go in pursuit of specific, specific candidates who match their specific ambitions. So, first of all, I don't think it's going to be as hard as they think it is going to be. With the rise of somebody like Bernie Sanders and Tulsi Gabbard and groups like Justice Democrats and um, the rise of just general leftist groups and, and you know, the idea, ideas getting into the mainstream, there's going to be a lot of moderates and centrists and neoliberals in the Democratic Party who are going to love the support of the Koch brothers. And, and you have to think about the fact that, and this, a lot of these people are like considered what in the past have been known, I don't know if they're still considered that way, but in the past known as as blue dog, blue dog Democrats. So the blue dog Democrats are the, they're basically the Democrats that are running in specific certain states that are like more, that have like a lot more conservative districts and they run that way. They, they run their, they do their politics in much more moderate, so-called moderate, but conservative ways. And these are the type of people, historically, obviously not historically, but I mean in recent, certainly in recent history, have seen, whenever they have seen any kind of like money being involved in a race, whether it's a local race, whether it's a, you know, Senate race, con congressional race, whatever, you know, whenever that kind of stuff has, has come about, whenever they see money, they love it. They're just like, ah, money, you know, money. Uh, because they're so greedy, they're so greedy, and they're so wanting to hold on to that power and wanting to be part of that, you know, part of that, that basically that group of elitists in Congress, in the Senate. You know, they're so obsessed with it, they're like, okay, I'll take any money I can get from any donor, whether it's the Koch brothers, whether it's, you know, Sheldon Adelson, whether it's, you know... I don't know, throw any donors out there. Who's who's that one? Foster Freeze? You know, I, I'm not very familiar with all of them. I, the main ones I know about are the Koch brothers and <laughs> Sheldon Adels and Foster Freeze. I don't really know a lot about. But um, those are at least the main like conservative donors, for sure. There's a bunch of liberal ones like George Soros and all those other ones. A bunch of people there that um, backed Hillary Clinton and stuff. But when it comes to the specific conservative ones, they're okay with that because a lot of these neoliberals and centrists, they want to appeal to these conservative districts. They want to appeal to conservatives with kind of like opportunistic, you know, right-wing ideas while calling themselves Democrats. And they're all totally okay with that. They're on board with that. They want to do that as long as they can, you know, win their elections and get to a certain point of like being known as like, you know, a fixture within that within that specific constituency and within that specific like district, as long as they can get that, they're they're gonna be okay because then they don't have to worry about any kind of um any kind of like challenge coming and like dethroning them essentially, you know? And if they have that status and they, they you know so if they had that status as, you know, being, you know, taking a lot of money and then, you know, obviously being known among their constituents and then so-called fighting for what they believe in i guess to i guess if maybe in a lot of cases they don't but in some cases they do um you know as long as you pander to a certain base of your you know constituency you're obviously going to get that you're going to get those donors to fund you now in this case with based on what this article is saying they're saying that well we can work with the democrats because we're going to push for immigration reform we're going to push for like criminal justice type stuff um I don't know what else, I forgot what else was mentioned there, but, you know, we're going to push for, like, policies that, you know, the two sides, consider, you know, in this case, you know, Republicans, Democrats, you know, we can, you know, conser conservatives and liberals, we can find a common ground on. But I don't really see it that way. And, and you know, listen, if that is the case with, let's say, this primary, so this primary or this election coming up or whatever, like, I guess that could be the case here. But I think, honestly, this is this is a larger, this is a larger play, this the larger picture here. This is a larger play for like the Koch brothers to get their foot into the door and to be able to you know because I think they are st I think they already are funding some Democrats. So like the obviously like very centrist type Democrats, centrist you know right wing type Democrats, conservative Democrats. Like I said, blue dogs. So I think they are funding like they are 
you know, donors for some of those candidates. But when it comes to all these other, like, not as centrist and not as corporate and not, as, well, maybe corporate, but not as centrist and not as conservative, those people, they're trying to woo them because they're trying, so they're trying to get their foot in the door by throwing out these, like, oh, yeah, immigration reform and, you know, criminal justice reform. But I think that's just their way to get their foot in the door so that they can then eventually get them as donors and then convince those politicians to push for conservative policies. I don't think that they're going to be, that they're going to be like, like pushing for, like they're not going to be pushing for like other policies that are going to be considered. They're going to, they're going to be considered like, Oh yeah, we can totally work together. They're going to go in there. It's like, this is like their, this is their, like their initial play. It's just their initial play to, to see like, okay, we can agree on these, you know, few things, or, you know, three or four policies. Great. But then the more money we give you, then we can convince you to go even more to the right. So just we'll propose these ideas that are, you know, middle of the road, so-called, but then we're going to try and get you more to the right, you know, more to the right, more to the right. And then, you know, what does that do? That just creates more conservative Democrats and it creates more corporatist Democrats, even though there's already so many to begin with. But it, the more you can create those corporate you know, the, the corporatist type politicians who rely on those kind of donations and those kind of donors, the more you can get them to agree with you on things. Because money talks. Anytime you can get um, any politician to agree with something, um, but there's no money involved, it's much more difficult. But then when you get the money in there, then it's a whole different thing. Once the money gets in there, then it's like, it's a whole new Paul game. And you can convince pretty much anybody of doing anything that you want them, want them to do, you know? And that's a really scary thing. So that's why politicians like Bernie Sanders are great. That's why politicians like, you know, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Tulsi Gabbard, these kind of politicians are great because these are the kind of people that don't rely on that money, you know, from big donors, let alone money from conservative donors. I mean, money from donors that are like on your side of the political spectrum is, you know, okay, that's, I mean, that's already bad. I mean, that's not really... Something that I, obviously that's not, not something I'm in favor of at all. That's and that's not something that, um, you know, any politi you should you should be getting money out of politics completely. But you know, if if we were in like this world of like, let's say if it was like 20 years ago, people were like, oh yeah, totally take money from George Soros and take money from, um, you know, Harvey you know Harvey Weinstein before he became a fucking sexual assaulting perv essentially but um you know from all of, like hollywood donors and stuff like yeah 20 years ago people were like yeah we'll totally accept those people but these days you know that shouldn't be accepted on any level it should be completely public funding or just money from small donors like me and you um but yeah but 20 years ago people were totally okay with like liberal donors but now they're like but then they're like you know now they're like or like at some point, especially during the Tea Party era, they were like, yeah, fuck the Koch brothers. You know, the Koch brothers suck. But, you know, now it seems like the Koch brothers now want to get there. And now they want to get involved with the Democratic politicians as well, because they see that, you know, the right wing or the right wing politicians are already right wing enough. Right. So all those people that were chosen, you know, during the Tea Party era, even after that, you know, even under Trump and all that stuff, all those politicians, they got those guys in there. You know, they already wooed those people. They don't need to do any more wooing. They're already on their side. They already got them. They already got them in their in their, you know, back pocket as it is. So. You know, they've already made them sell out. So they don't need to do that any more than they've already done it because they've already done it. So they've already got the entire, the Koch brothers and Foster Freeze, Sheldon Adelson, they've already got the entire de Republican Party, you know, sold, you know, selling out to them. Now they want to try and get the Democratic Party on board because they want to push more of the conservative policies, even though they claim like they're postpartisan and stuff. I don't believe that for a second. I don't think that's, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not buying that at all. I mean, I'm not buying any much of anything they're saying regarding, you know, the policies that, the policies that they claim to want to push for, because I think ultimately it's just going to lead to, to more right wing policies. So, um, but yeah, it's it's just this is a ploy to get yourself into the Democratic Party so that you, that you can invest, you can infest that party now, make them even more right wing, so that you know we can keep talking about how everybody needs to be more pragmatic and not push for socialism and not push for you know far left policies. God forbid. Even though those policies, because they know how strong and how powerful and how, you know, populist and popular those policies can be, and they want to get away from that, so they're going to do that by doing by doing this. That's and, you know, it's smart, but you know, p people progressives like us, we need to notice that this is a that this could be having uh, having its role in in the 2020 primaries, 
um, I'm sorry, the 2020, you know, like Senate races and congressional races and all that stuff. So as long as we can notice among those, you know, if we can nip it in the bud from for the, you know, congressional races and the Senate races, then hopefully we can nip it in the bud for any future presidential races as well. Because once that, once that disease, you know, once that that uh, that disease, you know, implants itself into one into one, you know, host, it's going to be able to spread around even more, you know, and, and at that point, we won't be able to get rid of it anymore. And so we gotta, we gotta get rid of it before it even, before it spreads any worse than it already is.